congratulations you're going to do some learning outside of the classroom and this is what this video is all about um, the idea is you have a go at the worksheet first of all before you actually watch this video to get the answers right let's get started um, the question asks us to label the microscope so um, pretty straightforward here we've got two lenses on a microscope we've got the eyepiece lens and we've got then the objective lenses and there's usually three lenses down here so we might have um, a times four we might have a times ten and we may even have a times forty objective lenses so they're the lenses that you can label next we have the stage so the stage is where all the action takes place on stage and on the stage you would basically pop your slide which could be clipped in in place so it doesn't move around so the slide obviously has your specimen the subject that you're looking at finally we look at the focusing wheel well there's two focusing wheels here we've got the big one and we've got the small one so can you remember what they're for the small one is called the fine focusing wheel and the large one is called the coarse focusing wheel all right um, you'll also notice a um, mirror on the microscope what's the purpose of that it's to reflect the light onto the specimen so you can see it clearly and of course that's why this is called the light microscope moving straight on to question two okay so here we're asked to calculate so there's the instruction here but there's some more instructions we're also asked to show our working so we're going to have a go at that the question gives us some, it's some information um, the microscope above has an eyepiece lens with a, with a times five magnification so there's our first bit of information it has three objective lenses times 10 times 20 and times 30 and then it gives you uh, an example of how you can actually calculate the total magnification so let's use those um, bits of information to calculate the total magnification when the times 20 objective is used so that's straightforward we've got the number five for the eyepiece object for the eyepiece lens and then we've got 20 here so it's just five times 20 that's the working that I've just shown now I'm going to calculate the answer 5 times 20 is 100 that's the magnification okay so for part B again we're asked to calculate to show our working part B is part of question 2 the objective lens is 30 the eyepiece lens is still 5 so now we've got 5 times 30 so the total magnification because the first lens increases the specimen size by 5 magnifies it up by 5 for the image then 30 5 times 30 is going to give us 150 so we have a total magnification of 150 so let's have a look at question 3 now so we've got Shiv here good old Shiv Shiv examines some animal hairs using a microscope um, hair X is 20 microns wide and hair Y is 60 microns wide so we've got this um, weird looking unit of measurement here so this is the symbol for a micron uh, or micro so it's a prefix to our unit of measurement so it's a micrometer which can also be pronounced micron so you've got 20 micrometers and a hair which is 60 micrometers wide so a micron is a millionth of a meter one millionth of a meter which is the same as a thousandth of a millimeter okay how many times wider is hair y compared with hair x show you working so how many times wider so we've basically got let's work that out we've basically got 20 microns and 60 microns how many times wider is hair y so hair y is wider um, pretty straightforward 60 divided by 20 
and you're going to get the answer three so it's three times wider so that that hair is three times thicker um, you can quite clearly see you're just multiplying by three so just a bit of arithmetic there for you okay part b Shiv examines hair X using a total magnification of times 150 so you've got a total magnification of times 150 how wide will the hair appear under the microscope in micrometers or microns okay well he's looking at hair X so hair X is 20 microns so we've got a hair which is 20 microns 20 micrometers wide um, we're going to multiply that by 150 and that way we get to see how big it is 20 multiplied by 150 is 3000 micrometers part C to this question give your answer to part B in millimeters so what we need to do is we need to convert uh, micrometers or micrometers we need to convert that into millimeters so how the heck do we do that well if you remember before I told you that a micrometer is a thousandth of a millimeter there's a thousand millimeters um, yeah there's a thousand micrometers in one millimeter so um, 3000 divided by let's get that symbol in we're not going to do that very well are we 3000 divided by 1000 equals 3 millimeters okay there's a thousand micrometers in one millimeter so 1000 into 3000 goes three times will give us three millimeters have a think about that one okay let's go on to part D this is quite a challenging question what total magnification will Shiv need to make hair Y so careful we're talking about hair Y now um, what total magnification will Shiv need to make hair Y appear six millimeters wide show you working so let's have a let's have a go at that how we're going to approach this just make a bit of space so we've got an object which is actually 60 microns in size we want to find out what do we need to make that appear under the microscope to appear six millimeters wide Now this is tricky as it stands because we've got two different units so we can't compare those very easily as they stand so why don't I convert the six millimeters into micrometers so what is six millimeters as micrometers well we know that a thousand millimeters is one micrometer So that must mean that six millimeters is the same as six thousand micrometers. So that's what we want to try and make this hair appear. We want to make it appear six thousand micrometers in size when we look at it down the microscope. We know it's actually sixty micrometers. So if we were to choose a different colored pen here, if we were to multiply. 60 by 100 so 60 multiplied by 100 that will give us 6,000 60 multiplied by 100 magnified by 100 would give us 6,000 which is exactly what we're looking for we're looking for 6,000 micrometers because that's the same as 6 millimeters now that's a bit of a stretch um, for your arithmetic and your thinking um, so it might be worth rewinding and working through that problem again um, because you look perhaps not all of you are going to get that first time around so just to be clear the answer to that question is times 100 that's the magnification we need to use so 
So question four, we're looking at um, one micrometer is equal to a million PM. What do the unit symbols micrometer and PM stand for? So we know micrometer is micrometer and the PM, okay, so we're not talking about time of day here, we're talking about picometers. So that's picometers and um, there's your answer. It'd help if I spelt it correctly though. An RE ending, micrometer and picometer. So we're looking at completing this sentence now. Complete the sentence, one micrometer equals 1000 nm, well nm is nanometers, and one nanometer equals 1000 picometers. In class I gave you this table, and this is something that you need to remember. You need to remember what these prefixes mean. So always refer to that table um, to look at what we need to do when we uh, look at those units. Okay, question five. Again, we're asked to complete the sentence. Um, the resolution of a microscope is the, is the minimum distance. Okay, and is the minimum distance between two points that can still be seen as, as two points, as two points rather than one point. So we looked at the difference between magnification and resolution in class. So next, what is an electron microscope? That's a fairly open question. So what can we, uh, what can we say there? Um, what is an electron microscope? Um, it is a microscope that uses a beam of electrons thank you okay given an answer to the last two questions uh, what is an electron microscope all we need to say here is that it uses a beam of electrons rather than light to go through the specimen and then part B state two reasons why an electron microscope can detect more detail, detail inside a cell compared with a light microscope. So why are electron microscopes better for seeing in detail? Two reasons. Um, the first reason is it's a greater magnification and the second reason is it's a greater resolution. So we can see in more detail. And there we are, homework done. Well done guys.